Hey there, Sparkers. Welcome to another episode of our RPG series. And in this episode, we're going to be doing some quick fixes to a number of different things that we worked on through episodes 1 through 10. Um, so stay with me here, and we're going to keep it quick and short and uh, kind of spruce it up a little bit on what we were doing. So if you remember in episode 1, actually, we brought in this level up uh, logic cube. And that was before we knew what multi-brain was, but... We're using multi-brain now for the mana and inventory brain, and we want to do the same thing with this level up logic cube. So if you guys remember, um, to use multi-brain, we want to make sure um, that the logic cube holding the, the code that we want is set to a template. So we just did that here. I'm going to move this guy over next to the rest of my uh, brains that are getting added to my character. So if I go to my character, what I did was use add brain. Um, to add these two uh, to my player. So I'm gonna just copy this line and bring it in. So then I have two, and let's uh, switch uh, this in-world picker uh, to point toward my new uh, level up logic cube that I wanna add. So we set it there, and let's make a new channel uh, that makes sense for this. So let's call this progression, because leveling up is a, uh, a progression system. Oh, I can't spell, let me fix that. <laughs> progression there we go and then we also want to make a new slot here and we'll just call it level or something to that effect you don't if we left these the same we would uh, end up uh, adding this brain in the same slot so it would replace the brain if uh, like let's say our level up and mana were in the same uh, channel and slot so we don't want to do that we want to keep all of those separate next I want to take a look in this brain itself so if we remember, we were learning about what uh, object variables and what a global variable is. Um, and those are meant so we can reference them across uh, multiple objects. But now these are going to be in my player object. So I don't need to do that anymore. This is going to be running inside my player. So let's delete a bunch of these references. So all these global players I can get rid of. We're also going to take this XP to next level. We're going to make that a local variable too instead of global. So let me remove that. Remove that, remove that, remove that. That one, that one, that one. That one, and I think I'm close. That one, that one, that one, and that one. All right. So you can see it actually makes the brain a lot more readable when there isn't so many references back and forth. So we'll take that out. And then on my player brain here, the only adjustment I need to do is uh, we called some of those variables in our in-game UI. Yes, we did. So let's fix that. Um, so now it's just my, my player's level. It's a local variable, so I don't need those. Same thing here, don't need that. And then on this guy, that is no longer a global. All right. So now that I got that fixed, let's make sure, uh, go to test and see that I can level up appropriately. So I'm gonna be checking the numbers here in my top right. Looks like I got XP for that goblin. Got another goblin. So it looks like I'm leveling up just fine. The same way that I was used to before. So great, so I got to level four that time. Um, XP is uh, zero right now, and I need 68 to get to the next level, so that's great. Jump back to edit. All right, so uh, the other thing is I do have some level up logic that's still not in this cube. I had it on my player beforehand, so I kind of want to consolidate and get all that logic in one place. So if I open up my character brain here, let's go back to page one. Uh, lines eight and nine were checking to see um, when my um, once my level increased I would call this page level up and I want this all now in the same brain so let's remove that uh, copy those two lines copy the parent line and it'll also copy over to the child uh, the child line too so if I paste it here just at the bottom of page one I'm gonna have that run now in this brain instead of uh, uh, in my player's local brain this will just get added to my player through multi brain so put those there. Now I'm gonna call page at level up, um, but I don't want this page, um, it's not in longer in uh, in this brain anymore. So let me adjust that. And so let's delete those two lines. So that page is right here in my character. And I wanna move this to the other logic cube. So let me go uh, to the options here and I can choose copy page. Go back over to this logic cube. If I uh, press the right bumper, I can go look at the new page and paste. So there we go. So now that page is in here in my level up logic cube all together with that reference. And I can actually go now on my player brain and cho choose to delete this page. So now my player brain is a lot cleaner because I can keep all that level up logic in that other brain now. So it looks great. And let's just test one more time. 
experience there. And I leveled up just fine that time. Let's take out this other goblin. Okay. So the next fix that we want to do, um, we can actually demonstrate. So if you remember the last time, I only got to level uh, four, or I got to level four with uh, zero XP. This time I only got to level three with 30 XP. That's because right now when I'm uh, defeating multiple enemies, and if I do that at this single frame um, and I gain a level, it actually wipes all the experience that I get at once um, because of that. Um, I can look at the code, jump back into edit. So if I go to my level up brain, you can see here that when my XP ends up being greater uh, than the XP that I need for the next level, my level incre increments correctly, and then I uh, find out what my new XP is that I need and it rounds it, but then it sets my XP equal to zero. But let's say I only, only needed five XP to get to the next level, but I earned 10 or even 20 if I killed two goblins at the same time. I would lose that you know, five or 15 um, experience that I should get. So let's fix that real quick. So the way to do that is I'm gonna create a new number variable. Let's go to values, number, new number variable, and we're gonna call it XP remaining. So XP remaining, it's gonna look at um, what the difference is, uh, how much more XP than I have than my XP to next level, right? So if I end up earning, four, I have 45 XP, but I only need 40 to the next level, we wanna know what that difference is. So I can use a subtraction here to find that. So there we go. So if I got um, 45 XP, but I only need 40, then I'll get five back. Um, and then the way I can do that is when I get down here and I set my XP back to zero, I'll make sure to add that XP remaining. There we go. And then last but not least, just to make sure we don't cause any um, errors, after I do that add and I, and I get back to that level, I wanna make sure my XP remaining does get set to zero after my XP calculates that. Just so when the next time I level up, there's not anything else remaining there. So now let's test that and see what that looks like. So now this time when I when I uh, destroy these goblins, I should always get a consistent number every time. All right, so that's how I got level four with XP five, and then I need um, 68 total to get to the next level. So there you go. Let me pick up all these items. So we'll test that. We'll uh, um, look at the next example of what we need to fix, but remember that number, and that should be consistent for the rest of this tutorial now. So if I look at my inventory, another problem that we had is uh, when I'm in my tutorial, if I press a prompt like let's say B, and then I, so there's no visual indicator that I hit B, but then if I leave the, uh, the, to, uh, the inventory, it's gonna actually dodge forward. So it's actually registering my input while I'm in inventory for my character's movement. Same thing if I do, if I press X to attack, you're gonna actually see my character change his position while I'm in, in the inventory because he gets ready to attack as soon as I unpause. And we want to fix that. We don't want that to happen anymore. So if I jump back to edit here, what I need to do is go to my player brain and I'm using this uh, not inventory menu to make sure I don't show the in-game UI. But we can also use that to hide, um, make unavailable the in-game controls. And the in-game controls here are like A press to jump, X to attack, etc. So I need to just nest these guys as a child line underneath. So let's go put these under. Now I did one thing wrong in here, but let's go let's go see what I did. Um, let's go test. So I be on some goblins here, and let's go to pause now. Then I unpause. Well, there is that weird camera transition, um, which is not what we want at all. Uh, so let's fix that. So follow camera in my character brain here. We don't want that to be nested underneath um, This boolean. We always want to keep that camera going. So let's take this guy out um, And let's keep him scroll him up to the top here uh, Not that high. Let's go right there. Yep, just above All right, so now we won't have that weird camera transition, but we're looking at uh, Gonna have all of these nested underneath so they won't happen while I'm in the inventory as well. So great. Um, other thing is that we're gonna actually add more menus. It's not just gonna be an inventory menu anymore. So let's quickly uh, edit this uh, Boolean just in the future we're prepared for that. So I can use uh, this re rename tool. Um, so if I click that option, I can actually 
go in and change it. So let's just say in menus. It's a little bit more generic, but we're eventually going to have like a stat menu and things like that. So in menus. Now what's really cool about the rename feature is if I go and check other brains that had that variable, it renamed it for everyone. So now you can see in menus has been replaced um, on this brain everywhere. So really convenient and uh, makes it really easy to rename. I don't have to go check everything. I just know that it's been updated. All right, so let's go to test. And let's make sure that works. And let's see if I can... Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay. So if I go to inventory here, if I press X, my character isn't trying to switch his attack position and he doesn't try to attack now when he's in the menu. Same thing if I hit B. Um, if I hit A, I'm going to equip, but I'm not going to try to jump or anything like that. So looks good. All right. So for the next uh, and last fix that we're going to do in this episode, uh, let's see if I can uh, get a situation um, where I can examine what happens. So in our inventory uh, system right now, if I have a shield and a sword, I can't equip both at the same time. I don't know many people who, um, you know, fight only with the shield. Um, usually it's they have a sword and a shield. So we want to be able to mimic that. But I did. I got a shield this time around. So let's take a look. So if I try to equip a uh, sword right now, it's going to actually take off my shield. And if I try to put back on the shield, it takes off the sword. So we want to you know, be able to equip both things because I think they're both important to have. So I go back to edit here. And what we want to look at is in the inventory brain. If I go to page two, we're going to go all the way down to where we're selecting different inventory items. So here's this is where we are choosing to unequip. So right now, we're, when we choose to, um, we're looking at all the, the items in the global uh, object set on player. So out of those, we're looking at what the current index is. This is where I'm scrolling in that, um, in that list. Um, when I choose A, so when I press A, I'm going to unequip any equipment that I have to my inventory. It doesn't matter if it's a shield or a sword. Um, I'm just unequipping everything, and then I equip this new object variable inventory. And let's fix that because we um, definitely can fix that. Why not make it so we can equip a shield and a sword? So what I'm going to do is move this inventory equals it um, up above here. So that's going to be used for uh, different options. But I can go now and look at what it is. And so I can go it. And if I go to objects, equipment, I can look at if it, if it that I'm talking about is a melee weapon or if it's a shield or if it's a ranged weapon, etc. So let's go if um, it is a melee weapon. I'm going to nest these underneath. And now a melee weapon is actually, uh, um, if you think about it, I'm holding it always in my right hand. So the default character is right-handed. So if I go to modifiers, I can choose to actually unequip something only from a certain socket. So if I do from socket, and if I go to positioning folder and then socket names, I can look at the different sockets that I have available to me. And I'm looking for right hand. There we go. So now if it's a melee weapon that I'm trying to equip, I'll only unequip something from my right hand back to my inventory. And then I'll equip the inventory, the, the new it here. And I can also, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to do the exact same thing for a shield. So if I go it is a shield, we're only going to unequip from socket. And a shield actually gets attached to somebody's left forearm. So that's that one option right here. So let's do left forearm. And there we go. So when it is a shield, we'll unequip anything from the left forearm, and then we'll equip this. All right. So just slowly look at that code in case you missed it. So you can pause it and jump back out. Let's see what that looks like in test. Punch some goblins. Let's hope I get a shield. I have a pretty actually rare chance of getting a shield, so hopefully I do. I did it. All right, let me try one more time. Pick all that stuff up, and let's hit restart. All right, here we go. We're going to get a shield this time around. Punch goblins. Oh, it's getting close. Shield, shield. Nope. All right. Let me uh, go in real quick and make my chances a little bit better for the shield here. I'm going to just switch this coin out to also give me a shield uh, in my options here real quick. Go to test. There we go. I think I made that shield. 
I did, all right, cool. So now if I go to my inventory, if I choose to equip a sword, I can also go and choose to equip a shield on my character. And then if I, you know, I got a knife too, I can switch out or a warrior sword, but I keep my shield there. And then if I had another shield that dropped, I could actually switch between those two um, without affecting which, uh, what I have in my right hand. So that's how you would be able to equip both a sword and a shield at once. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this tutorial um, in this episode. So we just wanted to do some quick fixes um, to improve what you know the work that we did from um, episodes one through ten. Uh, next episode, we're going to be looking at um, some new features and doing some uh, neat stuff. So stay tuned for that. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks, guys.